Hey, this is Tom, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to improve your server response time or TTFB in WordPress. You can use PageSpeed Insights or Lighthouse to measure this, as well as GT Metrics in the Summary tab, or in Web Page Test in the First Byte tab. You can also use KeyCDN's Performance Test to measure TTFB in 10 global locations. Now, Lighthouse is going to flag your TTFB if it's over 600 milliseconds but I would ideally try to aim for 300 milliseconds or less. And there's three main ways to improve this. The first is to upgrade plans on your current host. And the reason this works is because as you upgrade, you usually get more server resources, which should have a direct impact on your server response times. The next method is to move to a different hosting provider. Now I recommend Cloudways Vulture High Frequency, but I'll leave my hosting spiel until the very last section of this video. Just know that obviously server response times are your server, your hosting. The third and final way to improve TTFB is to reduce the amount of CPU consumed by your website. And this can be done by offloading resources to CDNs, disabling things in your WordPress admin so they don't run constantly. So just know that the majority of this video is going to be about reducing CPU, and the last section will be my hosting recommendation of Cloudways Vulture High Frequency. Without further ado, let's get into it. Plugins are notorious for slowing down your website, but they can also slow down your admin and your TTFB. I'll drop a link to this list of common slow plugins in the video description, but you'll notice that Divi and Elementor are in here. They add a lot of CSS and JavaScript to your website. If you look at Page Builder speed tests, it is abundantly clear that they do slow down your TTFB and website. If you don't want to remove them completely, I would at least hard code your header, menu, footer, and sidebar in CSS. You can also use asset unloading plugins like asset cleanup or perf matters to remove unused CSS and JavaScript. And Elementor also has some experimental features. But in general, I would never recommend using Elementor or Divi on top of shared hosting especially if you're running WooCommerce. You can also use the Query Monitor plugin to find your slowest plugins. Once you install it, you can go to any page on your website and go to this tab right here. Then you're gonna click Queries, and then Queries by Component. And then you can filter by the time right here. If you look at the left, you can see that WP Schema Pro is my slowest plugin, and I could potentially combine that with Rank Math since that supports Schema and then delete WP Schema Pro. So not only do you want to reduce the number of plugins on your website, but it's more important to consolidate plugins and use lightweight plugins that don't consume a lot of resources. Otherwise, it will stress out your server and you'll end up with a slow time to first byte. The next thing you can do is to do a deep cleaning of your database. A lot of you are probably using WP Rocket and other cache plugins for automatic database cleanup. This is good, but it doesn't let you go through your actual database tables. To do that, you really want to install a plugin like WP Optimize. This lets you delete everything that WP Rocket does, but it also lets you go through your individual tables and look at plugins that you once installed, deleted, but they left behind junk in your database. As you can see, I installed WP User Avatar, but don't have it installed anymore, so I can go ahead and remove that. Obviously, it's a good idea to take a backup, but this is how you do a more thorough clean of your database so you can improve the TTFB. The next thing we're gonna do is reduce the amount of CPU inside your admin. The WordPress Heartbeat API runs every 15 seconds inside your admin, and it shows you real-time plugin notifications when other users are editing a post. You really wanna disable this if you can. You can use WP Rocket, the Heartbeat Control plugin, Perf Matters, or do this with code, but I definitely recommend disabling the Heartbeat API. You can also use plugins like Perf Matters to reduce CPU. They can also disable the Heartbeat API, 
but limiting post revisions can also help keep your database clean. If you don't limit them, then every time you hit that publish button, WordPress is going to store a post revision in your database. By limiting it, then at least it won't get too bloated. If you only need a few backups of your old posts, you can set this to something like 5 or 10. You can also increase the autosave interval so it doesn't run every single minute and instead runs every 3 minutes or even 5 minutes. And then by changing the login URL, you are preventing spammy bots from hitting your server. WordPress has a huge problem with bots hitting the WordPress admin and login pages and consuming server resources. And if you move it, they're usually not smart enough to follow it, so it's a good way to protect your website while reducing the amount of server resources from those spam bots. You can also use the widget disable plugin to remove any unused widgets from your dashboard. And finally, the Disable WooCommerce Bloat plugin is really good if you're running WooCommerce. It lets you disable all that WooCommerce junk, WooCommerce cart fragments, and even scripts and styles on non-e-commerce pages. If your host offers server-level caching, you should definitely be taking advantage of it. Some hosts that offer this are Cloudways, Kingsta, SiteGround, and their SG Optimizer plugin, and they do Nginx delivery in the dashboard. But definitely take advantage of this because it's way faster than the file-based caching done by cache plugins. For example, in my Cloudways dashboard, I have memcached and Redis enabled, but I have Varnish disabled simply because I've heard reports of it slowing down your website, and I personally saw a little speed increase when I disabled it as well. So just make sure that if your host offers server-level caching, you're taking advantage of it. You should also make sure your speed technology is updated. What I'm talking about is your PHP version, your MySQL version, and then in your WordPress dashboard, make sure all themes, plugins, WordPress core, and any frameworks are updated. I generally recommend PHP 7.4, PHP 8.0 is available on a lot of hosts, but it has a lot of compatibility issues. Just test it out and make sure you're using current technology. You can also try increasing your memory limit. If it's 128 megabytes, try increasing it to 256 or even more than that. And that can sometimes improve your TTFB as well. Most cache plugin settings have an option to increase the cache lifespan. In WP Rocket, they have this in the cache settings, and you can actually increase this to save server resources. What this does is if you increase it, the cache won't be generated as frequently. Just know that if you publish content a lot, you may not want to increase this. But if you're like me and only publish every week or so, you can probably increase this to something like 24 days. If you run a news website or something and you need the cache built more frequently, then you can actually decrease this, but know that it will consume more server resources. Cloudflare CDN can be great for improving your time to first byte. Not only is their DNS faster than GoDaddy or Namecheap or other domain registrars that have a cheap DNS, but by offloading resources to Cloudflare's data centers, you're saving a lot of bandwidth from hitting your origin server. And their data centers are taking a lot of the load and it is really good for your TTFB. They also have some other features that I'm going to cover like bot protection, Broly, their APO, and the cache everything page rule, as well as HTTP3. If you haven't signed up for Cloudflare, it's very easy. You just add your website and enter your domain name, select the free plan, and continue. And this is where Cloudflare is going to update your DNS record. So like I mentioned, their DNS is much faster than GoDaddy's or Namecheap's. If you're still using the slow DNS, this can also help just by switching it to Cloudflare. You're going to press continue, and then you're going to remove your current name servers and replace them with Cloudflare's. The way you do this is you log into your domain registrar and find the option to use custom name servers. Usually it's under something like domains, DNS management. So you're going to delete these and replace them with Cloudflare's. I already did this, but I'm just showing you this as an example. Once you do that, then you can actually go back to Cloudflare and log into your dashboard. There's a few things I want to cover, and the first one is bot protection. Go to the firewall tab and go to bots and enable bot fight mode. 
Like I mentioned before, your WordPress login and admin pages are really high targets for spammy bots. And if you actually use WordFence's live traffic report, you can see that your login page may constantly be hit with bad bots and they will be consuming server resources. By blocking these, you're not only improving your security, but also saving resources. So enable bot protection, move your WordPress login URL. If you don't use Perf Matters, you can also use the WPS Hide login, and that should help you save resources. The next thing we're gonna do is enable Broly, which you can do under Speed, Optimization, and then enable Broly. This is faster than gzip, and I would recommend using this anyway. And the next step is to use their APO. Now this is not currently compatible with WP Rocket. You can see they have a page on whether it's compatible or not with their APO. You would need to use their Cloudflare plugin. But if you haven't tested Cloudflare's APO, I definitely would. They even say this results in a consistent, fast TTFB. It serves your assets from Cloudflare's Edge network. It's $5 a month, but I would definitely test it out if you haven't already. The next thing we can do is add a cache everything page rule. Go to your page rules tab, and the first page rule you're gonna add is the cache everything. So yourwebsite.com slash, and then an asterisk right here, and you're gonna cache everything. So this is the first page rule I recommend, and the second is for your admin area. I moved my WordPress login URL to onlinemediamasters.com slash OMM. That's why this is my WordPress login. And then I'm gonna set the security level to high, bypass the cache, and disable apps and performance features from running in the dashboard. That prevents things like Rocket Loader and other performance things from running in the dashboard, which you don't want. This is also an extra step to improve your admin security and hopefully save you resources. The last and final step in Cloudflare is to go to your network tab and try out HTTP3, which Cloudflare claims can also improve your TTFB. If your server response time is still slow in WordPress, then I would definitely recommend looking at other hosting options. Cloudways Vulture High Frequency is who I use, but there are other really good options like Lightspeed, Gridpane, RunCloud, even Kinksta is pretty good, but they're mainly for support. But as far as like raw speed, it's really hard to beat Vulture High Frequency. I use them. You saw my time to first bite. It's usually under 200 milliseconds. In the WordPress hosting Facebook group, this is a really good place to get unbiased opinions. Same with Backlinko's TTFB test. So SiteGround specifically actually had one of the worst TTFBs out of all these hosts that they tested. I actually moved away from SiteGround and can vouch that they got way slower and I don't recommend them as a company anyway because they're they've been making some pretty unethical decisions. Cycron's not really good. Obviously, EIG brands like Bluehost or Hostgator. And if you look at Facebook polls, these. I mean, a lot of people use these polls, but these are more of the recent ones. And there's a big shift in people migrating away from SiteGround and slow, cheap shared hosting. I wouldn't recommend hosting or a WP Engine either. A lot of people are moving to Cloudways, Kingsta. Gridpane is really good. They don't have an affiliate program, which is why you don't see them promoted a lot. RunCloud is also good. Lightspeed, obviously. But here are some of the polls taken in the Facebook groups. And here are a bunch of people who migrated to Cloudways and posted their faster GT metrics report or page speed insights. So there is a large shift in people moving away from cheap shared hosting and SiteGround to faster cloud hosting. This can make a huge improvement and should immediately fix your problem. I personally moved from SiteGround's cloud hosting to Cloudways. I'm saving about $100 a month and my load times incre or, uh, decreased significantly. And you saw my time to first bite, it's around 200 milliseconds depending on the test. But I can vouch that Cloudways Vulture High Frequency and their DigitalOcean plan are both really good. If you sign up for them, I do have a promo code for you. It's OMM25, and that gives you 25% off your first two months of hosting at Cloudways. 
if you're going with Cloudways, Vulture High Frequency, or Digital Ocean. If you want to look at some other providers, RunCloud, Gridpain, Lightspeed, <laughs> that's like the gist of this video. If you went through this and your TTFB is still slow, then you really just need to move hosts to a fast provider that can give you a faster TTFB. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Otherwise, peace out.